Hello and welcome to our last online Bible study for the year of 2021. Uh, this is for December 29th for our in-house prayer meeting, Bible study, praise session. So if you can't make it, we're glad that you're able to uh, at least hear this message online. But we certainly would invite you to be with us on Wednesday. Wednesday is a powerful time for us to join together in prayer and praise and thanksgiving. Well, in this particular message, um, since it is facing a new year, we're actually going to rehearse a very old and well-known story. Um, as soon as probably you already can tell what it is by looking at the background of our slide. Uh, we're going to be talking about facing the giant. And of course, this is a story of David and Goliath. And there's so much there to be able to just be encouraged by um, that I'm just going to be able to touch a small portion. I think about a lot of times uh, people who will have such wonderful stories of inspiration um, about a particular character in life that we may be able to uh, listen to, whether it be a great sports and athletic uh, individual, Olympic football, baseball, uh, basketball, something that they have been successful at, um, or business and how people will speak about their inspirational story of success. And yet, I'm going to be honest with you, I don't find any inspirational story that can top those that come from the Bible. Because the Bible is God's word, there is something unique about it. So rather than me finding some great author or politician or athlete or teacher or historian, I want to share with you this story of David. And it begins with the giant Goliath in chapter 17 of first samuel and verse 4 and i would encourage you to read this whole chapter and for those of us who grew up with the bible in sunday school this is just an all-time favorite it has to be and so well known how could i possibly bring anything new out of it i'm not going to i want to just encourage you here we go with the story and there went out a champion out of the camp of the philistines named goliath of gath whose height was six cubits and a span. This is a giant of a man. David faced a real giant that we're learning about. He heard his voice. He looked in his eyes. He pondered his strength and stature and wondered about what might happen as he entered into this personal struggle. Some have calculated out that this Philistine, this giant Goliath, was anywhere from nine foot nine inches tall to 11 feet four inches. And David, we don't know how short or even tall, but we know he was much smaller than Saul, who stood head and shoulders about all others. But David was probably well under six foot, <laughs> a young, ruddy youth. It is said about uh, Goliath that just the armor that he wore alone weighed over 250 pounds. And the spear he carried had a head on the end of his spear that was heavier than two 16-pound bowling balls. He must have been very intimidating. A long time ago, I was at a NBA game between the Kings and the Houston Rockets and I was able to go down to the floor and while I was there it was a time when both Hakeem Olajuwon who was listed at seven feet tall and Ralph Sampson who was listed at seven foot four took practice shots and showed such great ability and mobility while I stood courtside. I was in awe because here I am, so short and seen them, and yet I realized that these two men that I'm watching would feel like me while they were watching Goliath. I was amazed to see those two tall men close together, talking, 
and being there. And I can't imagine what it'd been like for them to say, hey, Bill, come over here. Let's play a little hoops. And yet this wasn't a game of hoops. This was a game of life and death that Goliath said, I can't even imagine seeing and hearing the taunting of this giant. It says, and as he stood and cried unto the armies of Israel and said unto them, why are you come out to set your battle in array? Am I not a Philistine and ye servants to Saul? Choose you out a man for you and let him come down to me. If he be able to fight with me and to kill me, then will we be your servants. But if I prevail against him and kill him, then shall you be our servants and serve us. And the Philistine said, I defy the armies of Israel this day. Give me a man that we may fight together. Oh my goodness, the king of Israel. Again, a man who was not short, head and taller than most people that stood with him in his army. They, the army and Saul, heard him. That says they were dismayed and greatly feared when they heard the words of this Philistine. This giant repeated these taunts day after day, morning and evening for 40 days, every day, every morning, every night. And Saul and his army were dismayed and greatly feared. They fled whenever Goliath showed up and made this challenge. And during this time, Saul made an offer for anyone willing to meet him in battle. And if you're victorious, and he made this offer. But it's when David heard this challenge. When David, and I'm not giving you the whole story of the, the idea of where David came from and what he was doing, but just enough to give you a hint to want to make you reread the story. But when David heard the challenge, his perceptions and his response angered his brothers. David saw this giant as a heathen and a man who was defying the armies of the living God. Look at what he says in verse 26. David spake to the men that stood by him, saying, What shall be done to the man that killeth this fisting? Philistine, and taketh away the reproach from Israel. For who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? David's own brother spoke to him as if he were speaking to a child without ability and without a pure motive. He challenged David by assigning pride and evil to the, his questions and his motives. Yet David responded quite clearly, quite confidently, and when he said, what have I not done? Is there not a cause? He was bold and showed boldness, and he was admired, or should have been admired, but was dismissed. David was dismissed because of his motives. You're just naughtiness to come up here? Even when he went before Saul, David continued to speak with some conviction. And he said this to King Saul when he was draw, uh, drawn before him. David said to Saul, let no man's heart fail because of him. Thy servant. <laughs> Here's this little young man. Thy servant will go and fight with the Philistine." Wow, what boldness indeed. In chapter 17 and verse 33, we also read, And Saul said to David after that happened, Thou art not able to go up against this Philistine to fight with him, for thou art but a youth, and he a man of war from his youth. Saul didn't question David's, David's motives like his brothers did, but he did question his ability his expertise. You don't know what you're talking about. You don't have any experience. The giant is right there. His taunts are real. He has been constant 
And he has been doing this over and over again. And yet David said, who's going to step up? Why isn't someone stepping up? You know, you think about for application for us, you and I are desirous to do the same a lot of times. We hear the challenge questioning our motives, or we hear the challenge questioning our abilities. Fear and failure stand like giants taunting us. But maybe you don't have a giant right now. But I'm going to tell you, during this whole year of 2022 coming up, one may appear, you need to be prepared just in case you have to face the giant. And by the way, David was prepared to face this giant, even though he had never prepared himself to face a giant. Same thing with you and I, facing the giant, there's something to prepare for. But I'm going to tell you, David didn't struggle with this giant as far as his defiance was concerned david acted immediately he used his past experiences of god empowering him to give him courage and confidence in his present challenge look at david's response to saul's observation about him david said this unto saul thy servant when you question my abilities <laughs> it's not me that you need to question. It's my trust and my faith in God. Thy servant kept his father's sheep, and there came a lion and a bear, and he took a lamb out of the flock. And I went out after him and smote him and delivered it out of his mouth. And when he arose against me, I caught him by his beard and smote him and slew him. Thy servant slew both the lion and the bear, and this uncircumcised Philistine shall be as one of them, seeing he hath defied the armies of the living God. David said, Moreover, the Lord that delivered me, here it is. You want to face your giant in 2022? Want to conquer and kill your giant and slay him? The Lord that delivered me out of the paw of the lion and out of the paw of the bear, he will deliver me out of the hand of the Philistine. And Saul said unto David, Go, and the Lord be with thee. You see, David's greatest tool was his faith and his zeal for the Lord. He understood the nation's position before God and their placement by God. He also knew he had just been chosen by God and appointed to be the soon coming king of Israel. God had revealed David's path to him. God had anointed him king and the king of Israel he would be. God has anointed a path for every one of his children. Do you know that God has a path appointed and anointed for you? Now, this year, you may see a giant along the way. But you need to trust him just like David did. Look back at your past victory, at any victory in which you saw the hand of God, and you know that God gave you the strength to pass that test. It's that same faith that will help you to face the giant. Don't let the giant dismay you like David. Now, I'm going to give you several things to kind of sum up this whole story and hopefully help a little bit. See, at, at some time in our life, everyone will face a giant. And this year may introduce you to a giant, to a new one, or to an old adversary. But here's the thing that you can gain from this particular passage. We're going to look at several things. Number one, put your focus on the enemy. Now, that might sound odd, but I'm going to explain that. Now, the reason why I say that is there were others that came and kind of impeded his, or I should say God's plan for him, and what he determined was God's will for him. His brothers came along and one brother challenged his motives. Said that you're just curious. You're being naughty. 
In other words, you're being wicked, you're being evil in this. Saul questioned his abilities, but David did not fight with his brothers, nor did he fight or argue with Saul. He kept his focus on the right fight. That's what we need to do a lot of times. Our fight is not with our friends, not with those who may disagree with us. Our fight is to face the giant. Make sure we focus on the right fight. He knew that God had delivered him from that bear and that lion, so he will deliver me out of the hand of the Philistine. These are enemies that are all determined to destroy the kingdom or to destroy the king who was to rule that kingdom. The bear and the lion couldn't kill him. He had to be king. The Philistine cannot kill or wipe out Israel because Israel is God's nation and David was promised a place to be king, a people to be king too. That's why he said, is there not a cause? God will deliver us to that cause. Our brethren and our leaders even may not understand our perspective or even the power of God that he has given to us, but don't let that detour you. They should not draw our fire. Save your warfare for the real enemy. We're called to be rulers of God in his future coming kingdom. You are called to be royalty and rule with Jesus Christ during that thousand year reign. The enemy are not the ones who will rule with us. The enemy is the one who's trying to destroy the king and the kingdom. Secondly, put your focus on God. Now, when I say focus on the Lord, I'm talking about putting your enemy in perspective. While the giant was huge in a physical sense, he has and is nothing. He has no power. He has absolutely nothing when compared to God. You see, the contest is not about the physical, but about the spiritual. Put your giant in the proper perspective. While others may see themselves as grasshoppers against the enemy, we need to see ourselves as the protected and the provided for the army of God. The army of God which can put on the whole armor of God and stand against the wiles of the devil and be able to stand against the wicked one. Don't lose your focus. Don't allow yourselves to be captivated by the waves and the wind that Peter was when he stepped out into the water. He didn't sink all the way. The Lord lifted him up. It was when he got distracted, when his focus was not on the right thing, on the Lord Jesus Christ, and he saw the winds and the waves. Put your focus on the enemy. Put your focus on God. And then also put your faith in the abilities that God has given to you. David killed a lion and a bear with his own hands, by his own strength. But he knew full well that it was God who had enabled him. You and I have God-given abilities. And I encourage you, this is a spiritual battle. We do not war against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers and rulers of darkness. And we need to trust in the abilities that God has given to us. Even if it's just our voice. That's all they needed when they walked around Jericho. They didn't need much more than that. God had given David an ability. God had given him a plan. God had given him a plan that would allow him to have confidence. David would, in fact, if you remember, Saul gave him the armor to try, his armor, and David finally took it off. I can't do this. What did he do? He trusted in what he knew. Look at the fact that in verse 40, it says he took his staff in his hand and chose him five smooth stones out of the brook and put them in a shepherd's bag, which he had, even in a scrip, and his sling was in his hand and he drew 
near to the Philistine. He didn't trust in that which he had never tested. He trusted in that which he knew God had previously used. Maybe you haven't had any battles like this. Well, you will after this year, maybe. And we need to put God's plan into action, but do so with praise. There are no formulas, no gimmicks, but it's God who makes us, helps us. And that's why it says, it talks about how that it is the strength of the Lord. When we put our action into, or put God's plan into action and into, man, I can't even say it. When we put it into action and do so with praise and thanksgiving, proper praise. David had a plan. In uh, chapter 17, verse 48, it says, It came to pass when the Philistine arose and came and drew nigh to David, meet David, that David hasted and ran toward the army to meet the Philistine. There was no fear. He had absolute confidence. He was not fearful of the enemy because he knew why he was there and he knew that God had empowered him. In fact, he even makes it very clear in verse 45. David said to the Philistine, Thou comest to me with a sword and with a spear and with a shield, but I come to thee in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom thou hast defied. This day will the Lord deliver thee into my hand, and I will smite thee and take thy head from thee, and I will give the carcasses of the host of the Philistines this day unto the fowls of the air and to the wild beasts of the earth, that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. The battle, he said, is the Lord's. It's not ours. And if God is, it's his battle, he's going to win. There's no question about that. So I'm going to give you two last things. In looking at this, I think you ought to, in facing your diet, giant, document your victories. Now, I don't know about you, but I can't forget the enemies that I fought. But I can forget some of the details. And it's some of those things that can be so encouraging. If you'll go back and in a journal or some notes in your Bible somewhere, we're not talking about writing this for publication or for the reading of others but that God may move upon you and use your own testimony to help you. Oh, maybe someday God might bring somebody along and you can use that very testimony that you can rehearse about God helped you face your giant. Maybe. But document this victory for yourself. Remember the moment. Memorialize it so that you can continually praise God for what he has done. The weapons of David, you know what happened to them? They were kept as a trophy. They were a reminder of when God used him in a mighty and mirac miraculous way. Of course, that wasn't just for David because we read it in the scriptures. And this resulted right then and there of something else. Not only could we, should we document victories, but we ought to anticipate results. It wasn't just for David. This resulted in the men of war being encouraged by David's great faith and his praise and thanksgiving to God. Courage was contagious. Verse 52, I won't put it up on there in the screen, but you can read it. And the men of Israel and of Judah arose and shouted and pursued the Philistines until Thou come to the valley and to the gates of Ekron, and the wounded of the Philistines fell down by the way to Sheriam, even unto Goth, and unto Ekron. Oh, you face the giant, it can be an encouragement to others. Put your focus on the enemy. Don't fight with your friends. Don't fight, fight with other Christians. Put your focus on God, for he is the one that will enable you and give you the victory. Put your faith in the abilities that God has already given to you. He doesn't need to make you into something else. He's already made you into you. Don't be disappointed with what God made. He loves to use the weak things of this world to confound the wise. He used a little young boy 
to kill a giant. Facing the giant. Put God's plan into action and remember to do so with praise. Document, document your victories and anticipate results because it's what God does. I hope that you've been reminded of this great story and how it can encourage us from childhood into adulthood. And if you are facing a giant, learn from David. Come and learn from the precious word of God. And this story can lead you to miracle after miracle of seeing God's hand in your life. May God richly bless you. Amen.